Hey folks, this is Johnny. Welcome to another home studio trainer video. And today we're going to uh, go through some HST hookups. <laughs> we're going to take a look at con uh, connecting the Alesis SR16 uh, to Studio One. And we'll be able to actually play the drum sounds uh, in Studio One. We're going to sync the drum machine up to Studio One. So it should be pretty cool. So here we go. Here we are in uh, the main screen here, the classroom, I like to call it. And you can see over here to the right you can see we have um, our list of instructions and this is just as much for my benefit as for yours so i make sure that i hit every point and then you can see i have my uh, sr16 and then i have this very old emu midi box and it works it works perfectly especially on the mac all right so what we're going to do is first we are going to if we read our directions we're going to hook up the midi in and out uh, so what we have here, let me move the microphone in a little bit. So it, in the box, we have MIDI in and out. We actually have four ports. So we have two in and two out. So we're just going to use MIDI in out one. So we are going to connect the out, the MIDI out of the drum machine to the MIDI in on the MIDI box. Out. And this is going to go to the MIDI in. I'm using the blue cable for the MIDI in. All right. So now I'm going to connect the MIDI out of the box to the MIDI in. on the sr16 now what that's going to do is going to allow me to actually sync up the play with the drum machine so whenever i hit play in studio one it's going to trigger the drum machine or whatever patch it happens to be set on all right so that should be it for the hookup for the physical hookup to midi so midi out to the midi in midi out to the midi in just like that Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, let's see here, we got set the MIDI. Oh, okay. Uh, so now on the SR16, we want to go through a couple of menu patches. So what you're gonna do is you are going to, let me move the mouse out of the way here. We are going to hit the MIDI button. There's a MIDI button on the SR16. And what we're gonna do for the first one, we're gonna page to the drum out. There we go. You want to make sure the drum out is on. And that can be changed by hitting these two buttons here. All right. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to set the MIDI clock to on or the clock in to on. So let's do that. And let's see. So the clock in is on. And like, like I said, you can make the changes with these two buttons. So now the next one is to uh, turn the MIDI through off so that the output actually works as an out. On the SR16, uh, the MIDI out can work uh, as a MIDI through or a MIDI out. It was, this would be if you're daisy chaining MIDI devices. So we are going to go to the MIDI through and we're going to make sure it's set to off. Those are the three important settings on the SR16. All right, so now let's uh, hit stop and it takes you back to the main menu. So now we have the drum machine set up. We have the plugs for the in and out into our interface, uh, into our MIDI interface. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Studio One. So we're going to actually go to Studio One. We're going to go to Preferences. And here we are going to set up our external devices. So let's see. So that didn't work. Let's try it again. Preferences. All right. So here in preferences, we are going to click add. Bam. Just like that. And we're going to select new keyboard. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the name. We're going to call this SR16 test because I have another uh, other setup for it in here. All right. So now... This is the important part. Make sure that all your MIDI channels are on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the receive from, and we're going to set this to uh, MIDI, 
uh, to the emu MIDI in one, and we're going to set the send to to the emu one. So now they're both the same. So the in to the out, to the out to the in. <laughs> now, the other important part for this is going to be, let me actually go to my directions, new keyboard, change device name, said send and receive, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we want to check send MIDI clock and use MIDI clock start. And that should be it. So now, if I open up impact, I should be able, if the track is armed, and it is, I should be able to play the sounds from the drum machine. There you go. I should also be able to select a patch on the drum machine and play impact. All right, so now, if I also want to record one of the patches, since we have the MIDI clock turned on, so now we should be able to actually turn, hit the play button in Studio One, and it'll trigger the drum machine and keep in time to whatever the tempo is that I have in Studio One. Bam. I can also go ahead and hit record. There you go. So now, if I turn the drum machine off, you will actually be able to see the notes that I recorded and hear them. There you go. Perfect. So I can use it just as a drum pad. I can use it to actual actually play programs or even full song programs the sr16 is great at uh putting full songs together and chaining up different patches it also has a uh, foot pedal inputs so that you can start stop and trigger the fills uh, it is a very cool drum machine um and if you want to use some of the audio from the sr16 it's very simple to just take uh the left and right outputs there's actually four outputs on it so you have a left and right main and a left and right aux so you can actually assign a kick to uh, one channel a snare to another channel and then the toms and cymbals to the stereo out uh to the stereo out uh, auxes so you can do a lot with this drum machine if you do plan to use its sounds. It's got some classic sounds uh, inside of it. Some of Elise's best sounds are in this particular drum machine. Uh, there's a couple of settings that I do want to go through real quick. I almost forgot this. All right, so in the, in, uh, in the new keyboard instrument, there's a couple of options here. For enable MPE, you have the default instrument input and you have the split channels. Now what this is for, it says when using MIDI uh, to enable MPE, and it stands for MIDI Polyphonic Expression, it allows you to connect multiple instrument parameters simultaneously while playing notes on an MPE compatible controller. Now I don't have one of those, so that's something I'm not gonna be able uh, to test, unfortunately, but you can actually go ahead and go through these settings if you have an MPE uh, compatible uh, keyboard and uh, you'll be able to use these settings to actually do that. You've got a pitch range and I, I'm thinking that's like maybe for a split keyboard. All right, lastly, um, what we have here is after touch, program change, pitch bend, controllers, you can leave all of those unchecked. So I think I've covered everything now. So uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Again, like I said, leave comments in the comment area if I missed something or if you have a better, uh, if you have any experience with MPE, I would love to hear about it. All right, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you all in the next video.